Good evening. I'm Krista Lee Ramlikan. Your local news starts right now. I didn't imagine that I will lose my daughter. Tragedy on the Toboggan Hill. My heart is broken. On the day 11-year-old Jose Assal is laid to rest, we speak to her devastated family. And Omicron is causing major disruptions to area hospitals. We have reached a level of uh, community transmission that we've never seen before. While our community continues to find ways to cope. I want to see my teacher and all my friends and I was hoping to play with them, but I guess not today. <laughs> A funeral was held today for an 11-year-old girl who died in a tragic accident while tobogganing at Mooney's Bay last week. The family had been looking forward to enjoying their first Canadian winter after their recent move from Lebanon, one that the parents and siblings of Jose Abbey Assal have to now endure without her. Judy Trin reports. And is not for public use. Crystal Lee. Heartbreaking story. Thank you for this, Judy. Taking a closer look at today's COVID numbers, as the Ontario government is only testing high-risk individuals, daily case counts are not an accurate reflection of the actual number of cases. In Ottawa, 35 people are in hospital for treatment of COVID-19, three are in intensive care. That's one fewer than yesterday. Ontario is reporting 20 more deaths due to COVID. There are now more than 2,200 people in hospital across the province. That's an increase of almost 200 people from yesterday. 390 19 people are in the ICU, 232 of them are not vaccinated. The Udway is reporting 43 in hospital today, four are in the ICU. The Udway Health Authority says it's reached its COVID-19 hospital capacity and is working to free up more beds. And Ontario administered more than 195,000 doses of the vaccine yesterday. For complete numbers, you can always check out our website at cbc.ca slash Ottawa. The federal government is providing 140 million rapid tests across the country, but in Ontario they're being rationed until the shipment arrives. Experts advise those with symptoms to isolate without taking a test. Natalie Collada has more on the high demand. Staffing shortages are happening across all sectors, and hospitals are no exception. Today, healthcare worker unions called on the province to repeal Bill 124, increase salaries for nurses, and hire more of them. Ali Chieson has that story. Climatologist Ian Black joins us now. And Ian, I hear it's going to be a breezy and cool day tomorrow. Typical January stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, what you see today, <laughs> kind of similar to... Coming up, as families face another stint of online school, experts have some advice on how you can cope during this difficult time. Welcome back. It's a challenging time for both children and parents. Students across Ontario have lost in-person learning again. They'll be doing home learning until at least January 17th. As Nicole Williams reports, finding ways to cope may need to be part of the routine. The new year is often a time for fitness resolutions and brand new gym memberships. But with gyms and yoga studios closed due to COVID restrictions, how do you keep that commitment to getting in shape physically and mentally? The CBC's Sandra Amma caught up with some runners and walkers along the Rideau Canal. It'll motivate me a lot. It's nice to see people making the best of this tough time. Our next story is also about adapting in the pandemic. More than half of Canadians now say they pay more attention to the environmental impact of what they consume, according to the consulting firm Ernst & Young. And consumer demand for sustainable products has only grown during the pandemic. But finding a way to get a new product on store shelves isn't easy. Robin Miller has more on the journey of one Ottawa company that recently signed deals with Disney and Warner Brothers. Coming up, are you looking forward to skating on the Rideau Canal? We've got the latest on the conditions for you. And after the break, we'll have Ian's final look at the forecast. Ian Black is back and Ian, we're so close to the weekend. How is it looking? I don't think so bad, really. I mean, a brief warm up on Sunday with a little bit of flurry activity. If you like the sunshine, you'll like... That is a Bohemian Rhapsody. No, a Bohemian Waxwing. I'm thinking of the Queen song. Uh, beautiful shot amongst the berries there. 
Nice queen reference, Ian. And as Ian just told us there, temperatures are staying on the chilly side. That means preparations continue for the skating season on the Rideau Canal. Crews were out today flooding the ice. The National Capital Commission says the ice needs to be about 30 centimeters thick before the skateway can open. For that to happen, there needs to be 10 to 14 consecutive days of temperatures between minus 10 and minus 20. The NCC did not estimate when the canal might be ready. This year will mark the 52nd season of the skateway. Well, when it's ready, I'm definitely going for a skate. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Meet you back here at 6 o'clock. Have a good night.